Okay, so that was one example, but that one example actually contains pretty much all the techniques we want to use in this particular section. That technique we just applied can actually be generalized. So let's take a look at a maximization function standing at the smaller side of an inequality. So previously we have dealt with this particular case, right? Suppose there is a variable y is greater than or equal to the maximum of x1 and x2. It is always true that we may split it into two linear functions. We just say y must be greater than or equal to x1 and y must be greater than or equal to x2. The two things must happen at the same time. And if that's the case, then you're done. All right. So that's pretty much one thing. This y, x1, and x2, they actually can be variables, parameters, a function of them. So it can be quite complicated. For example, it may be this guy greater than or equal to the maximum of the first thing, the second thing. Then all you need to do is to just take, okay, the first one greater than or equal to the first one, the first one greater than or equal to the second one. Pretty much, you just copy and paste. Then it's always guaranteed that you do not really change your formulation. Okay, and there may be actually more than two terms. You can actually have many terms in your maximum function. Then all you need to do is to replace all of them, replace this guy by all these uh, terms one by one. Okay, if you have n terms here, you create n constraints and then you are done. Also, if you have a minimum function at the larger side, then pretty much it's the same. Okay, if you have a minimum function here and you it stands at the greater than side, at the larger side, then all you need to do is to split the first term, the second term, and the third term into one, two, and three. Use three linear functions to replace the original nonlinear one then you're done. The formulation is still the same. The technique is good, but unfortunately, it does not apply to the following. If your maximization function is at the larger side, something like this, you cannot say it is equivalent to y less than or equal to x1 and y less than or equal to x2 at the same time. Why is that? Because for this case, y should be great less than or equal to x1 or y should be less than or equal to x2 in some sense it's not going to be end okay if you say this is end this is wrong why is that because if x1 is 5 x2 is 50 your y can be for example 25 all right y only need to be less than or equal to one of them y does not need to be less than or equal to both of them. So in that case, if you really have this situation where your maximum function or where your maximum function stands at the greater uh, at the larger side, you actually need an or instead of an and. So the linearization thing can be more complicated. But still, sometimes you know how to deal with this, right? You have several set, if you have a set of constraints and you only need to satisfy one of them. So in some cases, you may introduce integer variables, actually binary variables, and then you will still be able to express that thing. But one thing you know is that once you introduce a binary variable into a program, that becomes an integer program and the complex uh, and the, the complexity becomes much higher. So if you are having this situation where your minimum function is at the larger side or your maximum function is at the smaller side, you always linearize it because that makes your program much easier. A linear one is always better than a nonlinear one. But if it's the other way, in many cases we just cannot do that because introducing binary variables may not be a good idea regarding solving the program, okay? Finally, if you have them in an equality, also you cannot play the trick easily. Sometimes we may want to linearize the objective function. 
For example, when we want to minimize a maximum function in this way, then as we mentioned in previous examples, all we need to do is to replace this guy by w, and then say w is greater than or equal to x1, and w is greater than or equal to x2. Again, all these guys can be variables, parameters, or function of them. There may be other constraints, it doesn't really matter, and our objective function may contain other terms. For example, here. Suppose we want to maximize a minimum function with some other constraints, some other terms. All we need to do is to focus on this particular guy. Okay, replace it by w, and say that your w cannot be greater than the first term, second term, and the last term. Okay, use three constraints to replace the original minimum term. That's something you may do. Okay, and you already know why that works according to our previous example. So I'm going to say this again. Suppose you do this, then pretty much for this term, you replace it by w. You want to maximize the whole thing. So your w, you want to make your w as large as possible. So eventually, one of them would be binding. Which one? The one with the smallest right-hand side. And once your w is equal to one of the smallest among them, you will say w is equal to the minimum of them. That's how your formulation is equivalent, all right? So the technique, again, does not apply to maximizing a maximum function or minimizing a minimum function. Pretty much you just cannot do that in the, or in the previous linearization technique. Finally, an absolute value function is just a special type of a maximum function. So it can be um, dealt, uh, it can, can be done with the similar thing. So minimizing an absolute value function can be linearized. An absolute value function at the smaller side of an equality can also be linearized, just like a maximum function. So Lastly, I'm going to give you one example to conclude this section. Suppose I want to deal with hospital locations. So in a country, there are n cities. Each lies at location xi and yi. So these are given information. Here there's a city, a city, a city, a city, a city, a city. I want to locate a hospital at a location xy. So I want to locate it somewhere. But now what I want to do is to minimize the average Manhattan distance. So in this example, we are talking about Manhattan distance instead of Euclidean distance. So what is that? If I have one point here, another point there, Euclidean distance is to take the shortest um, straight line to be the route. But in a Manhattan distance, you may only move along the vertical line and the horizontal line. Either you do it in a north-west, uh, north-south direction or east-west direction. So in this particular case, the Manhattan distance would be the green, uh, the, the sum of these two green bands. Okay, so what does that mean? If you go back to this example again, this is the first distance, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, something like that. So mathematically, we know how to write it down. Pretty much, we are saying that you are having several cities, all right? So you have several cities. For each city, you know its location. You also know where is our uh, hospital. Then the distance would be for the x direction, you find the difference. Okay, this is x, this is your xi. So for the x direction, you find the difference. And then you need to take absolute value function because you don't know which one is larger. For y, the same thing. You do it. So you have y, you have yi. You don't know which one is larger, so you take absolute value function. And then for each city, you have this. You sum all of them. So the interesting thing is that this thing can be linearized. 
right? So all you need to do is to replace this guy by UI, this guy by VI, and then your UI should be greater than or equal to this guy or greater than or equal to its negation. Your, y, your VI should be greater than or equal to this guy or greater than or equal to its negation. That should be true for any possible cities. And once you have that, you realize, oh, this is actually a linear program, okay? Even though this absolute value functions seems to be weird, but this is actually a linear program, which can be solved easily. So that's how linearization may help us. If we don't do linearization, here we have a nonlinear program. For this nonlinear program, even if you don't have any constraints, it's still harder to be solved by solvers by any uh, commercial programs. If we linearize it, even if there comes constraints, still, as long as this is a linear program, solvers, softwares, they will be able to solve it easily, or at least much more easier. Okay, so linearization is useful, at least in this particular case.